know, the sand management brought us here, sir. Sand what? Management. Sand management. Keeping on profitable servants makes you a poor manager. Mm. Businessmen, hear me now. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. I want us to look at the statement of Papa Oyedepo of Living Faith Church. And in case you're watching me for the first time, we already looked at what the church growth index really means. And I went deep into it to make you understand the details of that particular phrase when it appeared in the letter he wrote to his pastors that he sacked. Okay, if you haven't watched that video, it's going to appear on your screen when you watch this video to the end. But I want you to listen to him again before I say what I have to say. Just listen to this specifically. All the offerings from rural churches for the next 40 years cannot be what they are building for them now. <laughs> because I learned some fellow who are saying that, uh, you know, it's because they don't have offerings. That's why they say to you, no. because you are sick. You are unproductive. You will be plugged out. Mm. Amen. We send you to go to the villages to reach out to minimum yes. 12 souls in a week. Yes. And ensure that minimum 6 of them come to church. Mm. And then 6 months you don't have 10. You are unprofitable. Yes. You shouldn't survive. Mm. <laughs> you know, the sand management brought us here, sir. Sand what? Keeping on profitable servants makes you a poor manager. Mm. Businessmen, hear me now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if you listen to that, Papa Oedipo has spoken his mind. And what he's saying right there is a fact, is a truth and nothing but the truth. I don't know how real... I, I want to ask you a question. Those of you that always comment in the comment section, where do I pick some portions of a video or something if i came and played the whole sermon that led to this statement would you come and sit down and watch it wouldn't you prefer watching the whole sermon in your church's channel so when i pick clips of uh, a sermon of things i don't really understand sometimes i'm still going to come back to the whole sermon thing because i read, read your comments about the whole why pastors shouldn't give to the poor and the reason why you should not give to uh, the poor if you want to rise so if you want to rise you show into an anointing most of your comments has triggered even more videos that I'm going to be working with that same content. So thanks for your comments. I really appreciate you guys. But back to the main subject. All of us, oh, come, come on. You know that his spiritual son is Apostle Joshua Solomon amongst many others, which I'm still going to look at some statements I have made to try to see if you can help me understand. Okay. But listening to this specifically. He has said here, and if you have to understand how businesses are run, I, I'm an employee, I work for someone. The more you have, you have the right to resign, we have the right to sack him. It's a system. It works like that everywhere. Yes. <laughs> they have been the one hundred and uh, thousand uh, seats. Did they collect money from you? <laughs> this will have been a party. Who told you? Do you budget for somebody's resources? Keep quiet, my friend, and face your job. <laughs> All that rest. They enjoy hearing from me, so I, I like speaking to them. <laughs> Amen. Even UK government agreed our churches are one of the best run charities in UK. Looking at this now, him saying that you have the right to quit and also to be fired. Of course, that's why you see some people will say God calls you, but God called the pastor, but another pastor fired up. Again, you have to watch my previous videos on this because if you don't understand the fact that the way churches are run, they are run like businesses. These people, most of you even to help me understand in the comments that of course, yes, it doesn't take three days like I made a mistake to say based on what I saw on your website as to how someone becomes a pastor in Living Faith Church. It takes about, some people say three weeks, some people said you have to go through the whole Bible course, this three years of Bible study, and then later, um, after some years or maybe whatever, you can then, you apply to become a pastor. So it's not as if you just go through the whole Wolf B, the other tiers of you know studies you have to go through to become 
maybe someone that is very knowledgeable that can be a pastor after you have gone through that and after some screening blah 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 you have to be the one to apply and then you get accepted to become a pastor okay so the question is are you called as a pastor or you just want to pastor under this organization by the fact that you know the bible you don't have a job and you want to choose this path as a career if you are choosing to be a pastor as your career then know that you have a boss your first boss like we say spiritually is god but your main boss that you can see come on like the bible would say how can you talk about the god that you don't see when you don't relate with the one that you can see the way you should be paraphrasing how can you say you love me when you don't love your neighbor <laughs> okay so i'm just paraphrasing that but if you understand this the, their main boss or the pastors that he is sacked because although this has raised a lot of um you know reactions on social media many people in this niche have already spoke about it but him still talking about this right now on a sunday service is different from the one he talked about in you know the auditorium is different i think maybe that that's actually maybe on the main sunday service and then we have the main um daily services they have there in canal land but i, I don't even want to go into the whole business parasitals that are there in canal land the hotels that are there the um uh, pure water making factories that are there a couple of other businesses that are run there in canal land even the schools that are there which still brings money into the church and he has said it emphatically no amount of money that can be paid by those who come there to give money or so collection or offerings can actually get to sustain or even cover the cost of building those places and some of you made me understand in the comments that the reason why they actually could invest 20 million 30 million 40 million if it's possible in constructing church churches in the rural areas is such that they maintain their standard of having you know good standard buildings and all but for you to have such kind of buildings in a rural area all i see is competition because maybe other churches cannot you know afford to have those kind of buildings because of course for you to have a building of 20 something million 100 seater of course there will be ac there there will be good sound system so all of these are investment into the church business meaning and click enter or search if you have done that what you're going to see on your screen is two meanings to business two so let's look at the number one meaning to business the number one reads like this it says a person's regular occupation profession or trade a person's regular regular occupation profession or trade what that means is that if your regular occupation or profession is going out to preach to win souls to heal people you are in business some people in Suleiman's church will say oh Suleiman doesn't even take any money from the church or oh, what the money the church just the church generates is for the church he doesn't pay himself i don't know i'm not in the church so how come you know that you know that because you heard him say so and when i walk with the things or the utterances that your men of god say some of you come in the comments and you are, you'll be just talking nonsense but anyway i give everyone the attention they deserve and reply all your comments but all in all what i want you to understand in this video is right right now is that you have heard your man of god speak are you still confused of the fact that church itself is business or you are still blinded by the fact that you are living in a spiritual holy ghost realm or maybe in the i don't know because some of you have seen me to be one canal human being but at least so far as i help you use your brain to think i may not be the one to open that thinking brain you should have but maybe someone else or maybe watching me consistently would help you start thinking for yourself being called into ministry is a very amazing thing being called into ministry and serving under someone there are some pastors i'm analyzing who have broke out from different churches are still doing well and are still loyal to their previous father in the lord which i'm still looking at their person and how their church is performing some people are doing really amazing in the world some people are really preaching the true word of god based on how i what i call the true word of god and all that but i'm not here to defame or to promote any man of god i'm here to focus on facts on especially on what is trending also papa has spoken can you beat your chest and say that church itself is a business like every other establishment out there you can't be hired you can't be fired you are supposed to make the attendance 
at least six every week or maybe win 12 new souls every week you have a target and i keep telling you guys come on yes the bible itself talks about you god being patient with us and everything with regards to you know um winning souls come on we, we looked at the example when i when i dissected the fact that um reno mockery was defending Oyedepo, and i got to show you the mistake that the, that, that the freeze and somehow could made with regards to them you know analyzing this whole situation of why he sacked his pastors but the fact still remains that every organization has standards even in the catholic church where my family is from there are standards in the catholic church and every priest knows this there are some things that a priest cannot be found saying on pulpit in the catholic church as a catholic as a catholic we have our established codes a pri it's difficult for a priest in the catholic church yes to deceive um the parishioners because every catholic to a large extent knows what a priest is required to do but what you teach and what you practice so for christians generally i will say that uh, the devil is subtle you know, jesus said we should be wise like the serpents Seven. you know reference to the devil but innocent as the, the devil is and the bible said the angel he's like uh, the angel of darkness can disguise like the angel of light, of light. so me basically maybe general principle but not um you know like a rule is um, the content of their message measure the content of their message see it by what jesus taught and luckily for us we have the four gospel whatever any prophet or man of god teaches you don't be lazy weigh it with what jesus has taught they are all spread out there then by the acts of the apostles too Fortunately, we have a book also called the Acts, Acts of, of the Apostles. Apostles. But there you find out what the apostles did and even what they thought. They didn't teach anything different from the Lord Jesus. And, and they were always making references. So any Christians, whatever you hear, no matter how, no matter how aromatic and romantic it may sound and sweet it is, weigh it with what Jesus said. Try to find if there is a connection, if there is a correlation, if it accentuates what Jesus um, you know, taught. And even that's why you've had priests that have left the Catholic Church and gotten married in Nigeria. Why? Because they want to have their own voice and preach what they believe in is in their own truth. So in every church, there are dichotomies here and there. There are issues that happen here and there in every church. But what really does matter and what I want you to understand in this context is that church itself is made up of the people. For the people themselves to live organized and actually move the church to the permanent site where it should be there are standards that are set by the church set by the organization you heard him himself said say that this organization cannot tolerate failure go back to that video and watch it again you'll hear him call the church itself as an organization and every organization has rules so him speaking confidently there you have not heard one single scripture this is him talking about his church to those who are seated wearing suits seated there those ones i don't know whether they are um, future pastors already pastors or maybe businessmen because even the way the church is being organized these days some people just sit there's places that are meant for some kind of people and the bible will talk about you know the way we dichotomize and those that you see at the front those that you see at the back and all that but i don't want to go into that because again church has organization you cannot go and go and sit where the choir is supposed to sit when <laughs> the choir is supposed to sit there you understand so when we look at no matter how we get to look at church logically everything they do is organized church itself is organized when i say it's a business i think it's a business so i understand why some pastors would want to grow under a particular uh, ministry or something and then maybe later come to start up their own but for you to grow under a particular ministry i think it's very important that you go according to their standards if their standards do not really work with you they have the right to sack you why because you apply to be a pastor that's one thing people don't get so when i see people get all sentimental about this i broke this down logically for you to understand when i analyzed the whole thing with um reno mockery's defense okay which i'm going to be seeing at the end of this video but the facts you which you want i wanted to understand is that this is oyedepo's kingdom that church right there is his soul's kingdom is his kingdom it is his dynasty and he has every right to operate in his church the way he wants i don't the way i see social media everyone is just being sentimental were you there when the church started you were not there you just 
most of us are just envious of the fact that okay maybe he has privileges and all that that is their business so you understand because they know how they got there one thing is if you are not someone popular if you're not someone that is in people's attention who even cares about you how many do you know that that in in a hush puppy there are thousands of hush puppies that you do not even know exist 